So far this year, we've looked at three topics. Two of them have been to do with algebra and one's been to do with finance. I just wanna help you remember what those things are. So we looked at AM1 and AM2. Those were our algebra topics. The first one was just the general rules of um, solving equations, simplify expressions, all those little things which you actually have learned in previous years, but we wanted to remember them. So that was AM1, algebraic manipulation one. Algebraic manipulation two, uh, we just finished actually, and that was when we looked at linear relationships. So things like straight line graphs basically, uh, where you're trying to solve those two simultaneously, like where do they intersect? And also funky things like piecewise graphs, like we looked at step functions, the ones that look like this. And uh, you can see where there's holes and things like that. So we looked at examples of that because those are the kinds of relationships we see in the real world for how different quantities are related to each other and how they grow just like how say the cost that you spend on parking relates to the amount of time that you spend there so those were the two algebra topics then we had a look as well as that at fm1 now financial maths we know it's really really practical we look just at earning money that's what fm1 was all about um, earning money all the different kinds of income that can be generated uh, whether they're to do with uh, a job that you have or an allowance that the government provides you. That's what FM1 was all about. Ways that you can get money. Uh, and we finish just by looking at budgeting. Like once you've got all that money, what do you do with it? Okay. Now, we're going to move into FM2 now. This is the last topic before your AP1, so it'll be included. And FM2 is not about earning money. It's about investing. It's about what happens when you've got money and you want to be able to use it. What happens when you put it in a bank or you buy shares or all those kinds of things? That's what investing is all about. And so this is not so much about like, I've got a job and therefore money's coming in. This is more like I've already got that money and what can I do with it? So the first concept that comes underneath this, we have met before, uh, simple interest, right? Now interest, just this simple idea, is all about the fact that money, we've said this before, is about power. Right, like money is kind of distilled power. You work for it, you, you have it in your bank account, and then when you give it to someone, that it gives you the power to ask them, can you do this job for me or this service, and I will exchange this money, this distilled power um, that I've earned in, resp in response for your product or your service or that kind of thing. So interest is all about the fact that if you're giving that money, that distilled power to someone else, or they're giving it to you, which would be you're getting a loan, then you kind of have to pay for that right, or whoever you're giving money to has to pay you for that right. So that's all simple interest, well that's what interest is about as a concept. So simple interest, I want you to remember, is governed by this very, very simple formula. And if you remember all the different pieces, uh, it's not that complicated. The I that starts with, that you begin with, is the interest. Like, how much is someone going to pay you, or are you going to have to pay for the right of being loaned money, okay? That's what the interest is that we're calculating. That P at the beginning stands for principal. Uh, even though it's spelled exactly the same way as the person, it means something very different. It's talking about how much money do you start with? What's that amount that you're actually gonna put into the bank account? Or what's the amount of money that you're going to be um, loaned? Then you've got these two parts over here, R and N, which stand for your interest rate. So that might be something like 5% per annum or 0.1% per annum. It depends on where you're investing or who's, who's requesting the payment from you. And lastly, N stands for the number of years. You might also see this formula uh, written rather than I equals PRN. Sometimes you'll see it written as I equals PRT and the T, T stands for time, right? So all they mean is what's the number, like how long are you giving your money uh, or borrowing this money from this other person. Uh, I should say, even though it's number of years that I've written here, it could just as easily be like months or days or weeks. Those are much less common, but it's really the number of time periods. Um, and when you have a look at the question, it will tell you in a lot of detail, you know, okay, how much is it every six months, three months, once a week, whatever it is, it will be included in the question. One of the clues that you will see, like I said, years is the most common, is if that rate that you get, if the interest rate is, for instance, they might say 5%, and they'll say PA, which means per annum, and it being a year, just like, you know, annual, right? So if you have a look at the interest rate, that often gives you a clue. And then if you read the wording of the question carefully, you'll be able to tell, okay, well, what's the time period? What time scale are we working on? Is it days, weeks, months, years, etc.?
okay? So now I'm gonna walk you through four short example questions that sort of unpack how simple interest works and how we can understand it and work with it. So here's the first question. This is as simple as it gets, simple. Uh, calculate the simple interest on $300. Uh, again, I'm gonna encourage as much as possible just like in an exam, if you're trying to look at a question and understand what it means, it's in your interest to be able to say, okay, look, there's a key piece of information there that I need to know. I'm going to highlight it. Um, I'm going to do that all the way through and I'm going to try and describe what each piece is. Calculate a simple interest on $300. That's important. At a flat rate, I'll talk about that in a second, of 6% per annum uh, over three years. Okay, so I've got Three critical pieces of information there. I'm going to describe each of them in a minute. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to highlight this. When it says flat rate, flat rate is pretty much a synonym for simple interest. In other words, for each year that you're in there, and here it's, it's three years, for each year you're in, they'll keep on paying you the same amount of money. Even though, in fact, your money is going to grow and grow and grow. That's the whole point of interest. They'll actually keep on paying you that same flat rate. Uh, if you wanted to think about it as a graph, this is not answering the question, but... How much interest are they paying you over the number of years? And that interest is going to stay the same in the first year as it is the second year and the third year, and the fourth year, all the way along. So you can literally see this graph, which is the kind of thing we were looking at last topic. It's a flat graph, so that's why it's called a flat rate. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's just um, finish off our sort of analysis of the question by looking at these three numbers and working out what each one is. When it says calculate the simple interest, on $300, that there, that's your principal. That's the, the starting amount, okay? The 6% per annum, that is the rate. And three years, that's the number of time periods that I'm interested in. So they've even given it to you nice and in order. So now I can solve the question, okay? I'm always going to begin by stating what my actual formula is is. Uh, this formula is actually on your formula sheet. You don't get any marks by writing down the formula, but it means that when you write the next step, you put the right numbers in the right spot. And that becomes really important um, the more complicated the question becomes. So here, because I've already identified what P, R, and N is supposed to be, and I've asked, calculate the simple interest, which is this guy over here on the left, all I need to do is substitute in appropriately, which we had a look at in um, our algebra topic before. Substitution is a key skill. So I'm going to put in my right numbers. I've got $300 here at the front. I will point out as well that here, even though I see that the rate is 6%, okay, I'm not going to write it as 6%. Even though, and we've talked about this in class before, uh, your calculator has a percent button uh, up there above the uh, left bracket, okay? I'm going to encourage you not to do that, but instead to get used to, to get into the um, rhythm of writing your percentages as decimals, okay? So to get 6% as a decimal, you just need to remember that percent means dividing by 100 per divide and cent as in like century 100 you know 100 years so six percent literally means six divided by 100 now when you reach for your calculator if you type in six divided by 100 and press equals uh, it might just give you six divided by 100 if that's the case uh, it depends on how your calculator is configured and what kind of calculator you have all you really need to do is look for the sd button looks like this there's an S, uh, a double-sided arrow, and a D. And if you press that, it's going to convert your 6 over 100, which is a fraction. Uh, actually, it'll probably give you 3 over 50. But we don't want that. We want it as a decimal. If you press your SD button, it will hand you 0 0.06. And that's the number I actually want. Okay? So I uh, came back to my formula here. I wrote down my 300, which is... Um, Principle. I've got my rate here, so 0 0.06. And then lastly, my number of years, so I'm going to multiply by 3. Okay, that's all done. I just need to go for my calculator now to crunch this number out. And I'm going to go ahead and do that now. 300 by 0 0.06 by 3. That's giving me $54. And that's it. That's all you're asked to do. Calculate the simple interest. So again, when you're highlighting things, you want to be really careful as to what they're actually asking you. It would just be as it would be just as easy to reframe this question to say maybe what would be the total value of what you have after three years, and that would be not just the fifty-four that maybe the bank has paid you since you've been giving them. Um, your money to loan, it'll be the 54 plus the 300 you started with. So if the question was, calculate the total value, it would be 
and the 54 that you've just sort of accrued as interest. But right now, all they want is a simple interest. So I've done, I equals $54, simple stuff.